about to start by saying hi everyone. I'll keep the intro short and sweet today because I think we're all here to hear, hear what Ricky's got to say, me included. Um, if you want to ask any questions, just use chat um, and we'll get them answered as we're going. Brilliant, cheers Anna. Do you want me to get things started? Yes, fire away Ricky. Awesome, well thanks everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, I'll ask some questions as we go in but Obviously, I won't be able to see them. So, Anna, if you could shout them out to me, if anyone's got questions as we go, you just jump out and shout out. Obviously, everyone else is free to shout out as well. But if you type anything in the chat, I won't be able to see it. So, Anna, you can uh, monitor that for me and just shout out if I miss anything. So, I guess the question everyone asks this time is, can, can everyone see my screen okay? Yeah, all good. Brilliant. Cool. So thanks for inviting me, um, Dave and Anna, to chat to everyone about um, these sort of challenging times that we're in at the moment and the digital marketing um, aspects of that, the impacts it's had on us and the advice I can give to people at the moment. So I'm going to do that by running through three main things. I'm going to go through kind of what's happening, what is the situation right now, what data do we have to share with you around what's happening what my sort of three considerations are, what I'm talking to our team about, how we're looking, what lens we're looking at marketing through, and what happens next. What are the things we're going to find after this? What are the things we can prepare for now for, for life after this situation? So in terms of what's happening now, just a question for you guys to get us all started. What are you guys doing now differently to how you started before this, what habits have changed, what technologies you're using, has your schedule changed? If you could just jump in the comments or shout them out, just let me know a little bit about what's changed from your perspective during this time. Sorry, just, just a few few messages that have come through. So Tony Ann's saying we're pushing ahead lots of um, team chats, video calls. Uh, Mark, Mark Burns saying Slack is back. Um, <laughs> Ben obviously saying lots of Zoom meetings, using video to reach out to people. Um, Caroline, uh, Zoom, lots more video. Uh, Scott saying, uh, encouraging our customers to embrace Zoom meetings to communicate with homeowners. Um, using chat, Microsoft Teams. Uh, trying to, uh, Simon's saying, we're trying to look at new ways to service our clients outside what we usually do. So offer client services we don't, uh, they don't usually use us for. Uh, Rich is saying, really busy time in IT at the moment. Um, so there's a lot seems to be some common, obviously Zoom, uh, a lot of people using Zoom and, and Microsoft Teams seems to be um, coming through. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, people, yeah, Teams, chat, Zoom, basically. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you've all said that because my next slides are gonna come as no surprise to anyone then because it pretty much reflects what you guys are all going through, what you guys are feeling, how your habits have changed. So setting the context from the sort of things we can see from a data perspective, um, we're all consuming more content online than ever before. So in the last few weeks, has been more content consumed than at any other point in history. Um, all the ISPs, um, so internet service providers, are providing some data around this. And when we send the slides around, there's a link in here where you can have a read through the date yourselves. But most people are reporting anywhere between 50 and 100% more tra web traffic than normal. And that goes with all the things you guys have just said. And certainly I'm a part of that. So to give you some insight into how I've changed from a personal perspective, I've used the internet in extra ways than I would normally. So we signed up to Disney Plus to try and keep the family entertained while I do webinars like this. They can sit downstairs and watch a film. Um, I played a game of Dungeons and Dragons online for the first time with some friends from work. Obviously not something I would normally do online, but it was a nice change and something that was extra internet usage that I wouldn't normally use. And then the last one is I've been looking at what my beard's going to look like at the end of this. Like I started this whole thing with stubble. I'm going to come out of it with a huge beard. I'm just trying to understand what to do with it, whether to chop it off, whether to grow it. So I'm using the internet in different ways than I would have before this. I'm researching new things. I'm using extra bandwidth, just like you all said. From a business perspective, I'm doing exactly the same. So I know Mark mentioned this in the chat, but where we've turned Slack on for our business. So like a, an instant messaging service for our business, we're very used to picking up and going to talk to people face to face, but obviously we can't do this in this time. So we're using tools like Slack. Um, I think everyone mentioned Zoom. 
Um, I do about five or six Zoom calls in a normal week. At the moment, I'm doing an extra 45 Zoom calls a week. So I'm averaging over 50 at the moment. So I'm doing around 80% of my workday is spent on Zoom. So I'm certainly adding to that bandwidth and extra internet usage with that. And then on a, a business perspective, we've been researching uh, new tools. So uh, we're in the process of thinking about changing project management systems. So as we've had some uh, time at home and a bit of um, isolation, we've been using that time to research which tools could we move to, what are the pros and cons of them all. And the end of that will be a £100,000 business decision. And we're using this time right now to do the research and lay the foundations for that. So certainly my habits have changed. I'm using the internet more both on my personal life and for my business life. It's certainly ramping up. And I'm sure you've all seen um, this chart. It's been doing particularly well on LinkedIn and other social media channels recently, but this is good analysis. And again, all the links are in the deck when I send it around in terms of what categories are doing well and what categories are doing poorly during this period. So, Unlike um, a normal recession, um, this crisis has polarized businesses uh, more than ever before. So there's people doing six, 700% better, there's people doing 600, 700% worse. And it's not just the obvious ones, things like disposable gloves and um, toilet paper and things that we're all reading about. It's things like um, gym equipment, um, home office equipment doing particularly well. And on the bad side, it's things like cameras and clothing and stuff, they're having huge negative impacts. And then there's this space in the middle, um, which many of our businesses may be digital 22, certainly in this situation, if we're kind of, we're not going through a huge growth phase, we're not going through a huge decline phase, we're just somewhere in the middle. And I'll talk about what to do as all three of these companies through this sort of presentation today. And then just pulling on our own experience, just to give you some insight into what's the impact being on our sort of web traffic and our digital marketing. So on the left-hand side, you can see what normal looks like for us. Um, it's normally trending upwards. We're getting that sort of scalable, consistent growth. And you could see the first few weeks of um, February were like that, that sort of purple period here for us of normal. When people in the UK started to take coronavirus uh, particularly seriously, so say the back end of February, first couple of weeks of March, uh, we noticed our traffic drop 16% uh, versus the normal. And then when we went into lockdown mode, uh, when the government did the announcements and asked us all to stay at home, uh, we saw our traffic drop 31%. Obviously people, particularly in this low period here, people adjusting, buying desks, getting laptops, whatever they needed to do to carry on their work at home. But the good news is, and I'd heard this reported across many um, companies um, and many of the people I follow on social media were saying the same, that things are actually starting to pretty much get back to normal from a traffic perspective. So you can see here, the last sort of <laughs> seven days plus, we've been pretty much back to normal. Um, so people have adjusted to this new online life and things are just starting to pick up. And when I shared this with the team on Slack, um, they obviously we work with dozens of clients. They were saying they can see these shoots of recovery uh, with most of our clients, some of them are either back to normal or beginning to get back to normal. Um, so hopefully this is encouraging signs, but just to give you some insight into what our data has been like, what dips we've seen during this crisis. Um, and then I want to run in what are our three marketing considerations right now. Um, but before I do that, I just want to again ask you guys, how has your marketing changed in the last two to four, four weeks? What are you guys doing differently, um, if anything, um, because of the situation we're in. Rick, Ricky, I think um, from, from, as you know, from our perspective, we, like, like a lot of printing companies out there, order intakes down, which is to be expected, um, inquiries are down. I, I saw some uh, posts recently from uh, some of the MDs from some other print companies where their order levels are at kind of 10, 12% of what they should be. Mm -hmm. um, I think what what we decided to do, obviously we're building on the strength of the Be Brilliant Club for the last kind of two or three years. And we are in that position where all we're trying to do is, is kind of the get ready to be ready. Um, so we're putting on events like this. We are going softly, softly. We're just reaching out and we're just there for people. And if, if at the end of that, there's obviously um, somebody wants something doing, then great. Um, if they don't, then that's fine. For us, it's about preparing to see what life's going to be like at the other side. Um, 
we've we've got a lot of exciting stuff going off and it's it's just a case of releasing that at the right times really so for us it's kind of more of this do as much as this as possible really <clears throat> um, makes sense that's a good good approach for sure and i'll i'll touch on a, through a few of those points when i'm going through this um i don't know if there's any comments coming because i can't see them but has anyone else's marketing <clears throat> changed um yeah. over the last two four weeks? hi ricky hi Hi. Yeah, we've changed our marketing focus from being uh, a business acquisition to being business support, not because we're holier than now, just because there's not a lot of work for us to do. And I work closely with Dave in, in other areas. We're a software provider. So we've changed our marketing profile. So we now have things like a, a virtual pub twice a week. Okay. Oh, an excuse to get pissed. I'll be <laughs> it, is a, it is a very worthwhile experience, by the way. It's a lot of fun. It's good. Yeah. The idea is to to find out where people are as a barometer, what people need now that we can help with, because we're not going to make any money. We've, we've resolved ourselves to that. But to, to, to ease and support the green shoots of prosperity when we come out the other side of this, because we will come out the other side. It'll be a different landscape, especially where marketing and in our industry, the print industry has changed. But on, online ordering, we're still seeing strong, you know, strong interest in it. And yeah. people are now making the moves to, to take their businesses online and to have this as a contingency should this nightmare ever happen again. So, yeah, completely changed, completely changed. Good, yeah. I agree. Uh, there's a, again, there's a few of the points in there about preparing, uh, using this time to prepare for what's coming next and a few of the points you've touched on, which, which I'll go into, so completely. There's a few comments, Ricky, online are um, more internal comms, social media use, uh, trying to build relationships, not sell products, uh, launching online webinars, uh, somebody saying focusing on products that are essential right now, such as hand hygiene, cleaning products, that's, that's from Martin, it's relevant to what to what those guys do. Uh, rich content, reaching out to support customers, not selling, I think that's a massive point that people yeah. are wanting yeah. to get across. Um, yeah talking uh, more with the help message right now via social, uh, showing people products that can help them right now, yeah. Uh, much more hands-on, talking more to customers, exploring our own um, Insta-live videos, focusing on tips, working from home, etc. cetera. Um, articles, relevant content, reaching out to customers to support. Um, and, and Mark's just added with, agree with everything that um, has just been said, leading with empathy. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, some great points in there. Most most of these I'm going to go into a little bit of detail on. Um, but the, the way I the lens I'm putting marketing in right now, I've kind of boiled down to, to three things. I'll run through these with you. But it, it, again, we're all saying the things that I'm thinking and feeling. So that's really reassurance here. Um, the first sort of consideration, uh, the really important thing right now is context matters. Obviously, context matters in marketing all of the time. But context matters right now a lot. Um, and again, doing research for this, I saw this brilliant quote by Rand Fishkin. Um, if you don't know by now and never heard me talk before, uh, Rand is someone I really follow. He's a good thought leader in the digital marketing space. And the way he summarized this was when you're sending a tweet, writing an email, publishing a blog post, running a webinar, whatever you're doing right now, you're sending that message within the context of the coronavirus outbreak. So everything you have got, everything you're putting out there is being viewed in that lens. So my first thing is, audit what you're doing right now or what you had pre-planned so you don't fall foul of this so your stuff isn't out of context and i've got some good examples of where people maybe aren't doing this so for digital 22 for example like we fell foul of this in the first few days um, we run a software called hubspot it helps us do uh, marketing automation um, and on screen here there's an example of a, an email workflow so an email automation sequence that we have running this has been running in our business for about five years and basically all it, all it does is it identifies people who have low engagement rate so it's really dangerous to have an email list uh, and send emails to people who aren't engaging because it reduces your um, email sender score and it reduces your ability to send email to people who are active so we have this running and it identifies people it, it sends them two or three email nudges to basically say we know you're not reading our email would you like to unsubscribe all the way through to the end when we do actually unsubscribe them for them and we actually get them out of our list. But there's an email in this and the end of this sequence, the actual subject line of our last email is this is the end. Um, obviously, probably not something that you want <coughs> dropping in your inbox right now. Um, and we noticed in the first few days that we two or three people have received these emails from us. Luckily, no one jumped in it or complained, but it's certainly not an experience I'd like anyone to get from Digital 22 during this time. 
So make sure you use this time to audit what you've got so you don't make these mistakes uh, like we did in the first couple of days. And it isn't just us, there's thousands of companies still doing marketing, pretty much ignoring the situation. So um, the top right corner, there's a, um, an ad I saw yesterday on, I think it was on Reddit. Um, this is an ad from a phone company it basically says, uh, you've got places to go, you've got people to see, you need a phone that does blah, blah, blah. Obviously, that lacks any sort of context because pretty much the world is on lockdown. I've not got places to go. I've certainly not got people to see. I'm, I'm stuck in my house for the considerable future. So that message in absolutely doesn't resonate with me. If anything, it completely turns me off because it doesn't show real context or empathy for the situation I'm going through. The other one below is an email we received from a uh, company who sell bikes. A uh, huge banner just said pandemic promotion. Um, obviously, this could be just me, but I believe that has a very lack of empathy and, and taste. Um, so I don't want any of us to be those guys. And plus, they're in a category that's trending up six, seven hundred percent. So I'd probably question whether they do actually need a discount at all. But that aside, this is the time to uh, audit your message and make sure that what you had planned before this um, can still be used and still is in good taste and good empathy during this situation. Point number two, um, my personal opinion is this isn't the time to stop marketing. And um, that's my personal opinion. So I wanted to go and really deep dive into this and read about what's happened during previous crises, during previous recessions, how have marketers responded. And I found an excellent piece uh, by the Harvard Business Review. Again, the link is here and you'll get it when you get the slides. Um, their summary to the piece was on average, um, increases in market and spend during recession time have boosted financial performance throughout the year following. Uh, so what they're saying is people who do continue to market or uh, invest more in marketing during these periods will come out of the other side stronger. And I'm sure as people, um, as sales and marketing professionals, we've seen what the other side of this can be. We've all seen this dangerous cycle that some companies get themselves into. I've seen companies get themselves into this when they've not been in recession or they've not been in crisis. Um, but you'll recognize it. It's the fact that people reduce spending in marketing. It reduces sales further. Uh, the business makes cuts. They make layoffs. They do whatever they need to do because the sales are reduced. Uh, that produces fear, fear in employees, fear in uh, their prospects, fear in their customers which ultimately fuels the funnel further. So they reduce market and spend more, they reduce sales more, they cut more, more fear. And what this is, is that this is a warning message to uh, avoid a future crisis. You can actually spin yourself into a future crisis by getting too deep um, into the cutting scenario during this phase. And again, um, linking back to that same piece um, from the data from previous recessions, so this is a really good study. I, I, I'd urge you all to read it. It's got a lot of data from a lot of previous recessions. And it says during recessions, it's really important to remember the customers are the cash flow of the business and they're the organ organic growth of the business. Uh, marketing isn't an optional cost. It's a good cost. It's essential to keep bringing in customers, keep bringing in revenue and future customers during this time. Um, so I guess what that's saying is see marketing as a good cost. It's a cost which brings you in money, which therefore uh, gives the lifeblood to the company. Marketing isn't an optional cost that you can cut at will, um, as we've seen many com companies do at this time. Obviously, a big note on that is I understand all of those decisions don't necessarily lie with us. Uh, like where the marketing managers, the marketing directors, and the salespeople, some of these pressures can come from above. Um, and what I'd say to that is if you need to make cuts, absolutely understandable. Um, I have huge sympathy for anyone in that situation. What I'd urge people to do is cut, but cut with analysis. Don't just cut um, off and switch off channels en masse. So don't just go, let's switch off PPC or email or SEO or whatever your channels are that you run. Don't just go, we'll switch that one off, we'll switch that one off, we'll switch that one off. What I'd urge you to do is look at those channels individually, look in detail at which parts of those channels are providing positive ROI or have provided positive ROI over the last three to four months and keep those parts going. So it may be the case of you reduce a lot of things uh, by a little rather than just sledgehammering out individual channels. Um, and as we've just seen in the data that I've shown, the last two to four weeks data perhaps isn't gonna be an accurate reflection 
um, of what's to come even in the following weeks. So I'd look a little bit further back and use three, four, six month data to make your analysis. Uh, but this is a really important exercise to go through because often you can find wastage, you can find a bit of fat on the channels that you do run that you can cut off um, without it actually impacting results, without it impacting the amount of leads you get into your database, without it impacting the amount of sales coming in. So where I would say do cut, uh, cut with analysis uh, wherever possible. And point number three is to look at the two situations. You're likely to be in one of two situations. So even from the conversations we heard right at the start, there's people who are losing business right now and there's people in spaces like IT who are doing pretty well right now. So you're likely to be in one of these two camps. You've either got an essential or a desirable product right now. So those sorts of companies that are on that list or you're a non-essential product. So your business is standing still or pretty stagnant or at worst declining pretty rapidly. Um, and I'm gonna give a bit of ways to think about what to do based on which side of this uh, coin you're on. So the first one is the essential products. And to be honest, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna talk about this for two seconds because if you've got an essential product right now, um, you pretty much don't need my advice, you're growing 600%. Uh, but my advice would be to market it um, this, in my opinion, isn't the time to do offers for essential products. This is, and it's definitely not the time to do price hikes or price increases, obviously, because that's going to lead you um, to long-term bad press and negative sentiment with your customers. Your job, if you're a marketer and you've got an essential product right now, is just to let more people know about it. And when I've been talking to people in this situation, um, the thing they come to me with is they feel this sort of guilt that they are doing well when others perhaps aren't. Um, my advice to people in that situation is this can be a positive time for your company. Obviously, you don't want this to happen. You've not asked for it to happen. But if it is happening to you, this is the reality. Uh, your product is desirable through no fault of your own. Just make sure you market it appropriately. Just make sure your, your messaging has empathy. But feel free to tell more people about it. Don't let, it, don't let the guilt hold you back or the situation hold back. What could be a successful time for your company if you're in that situation? Then this is the bit I'm going to focus on. What about if you've got a non-essential product? So like many people said in the intro, they've got products that are perhaps non-essential or orders are down or whatever it is. For the people in this, and most of you said this is what you're doing anyway, my advice would be to use this time to expand your audience. This isn't the time you're going to close deals, but you can expand your audience massively during this time. And the question, the first question I'd ask in your marketing meeting during this time is how can we genuinely help people? How can we help our personas? So when I say personas, this is uh, kind of your target market. These are the people that you're wanting to appeal to and influence. How can we genuinely help these people? And how can we grow at the same time? How can we combine these two things together? And there's loads of really good examples. I'm sure you've read most of these about companies going very big with this and getting a lot of attention, getting a lot of trust, getting a lot of new users um, for the things that they're doing right now. And those companies aren't doing it to drive revenue today. Um, but they're making a bet that many of the fans that they create during this period <coughs> will be there when it's all over. Um, so a couple of good examples of that. Um, you've got the sort of education, online education space. So a company we follow like Digital Marketer, but there's others like Moz and other people doing this, is they're giving away access to their product for free for um, this period. So it might be for like 90 days. And in the digital marketer example, they've gained 32,000 new users of people coming in through this free offer. Um, obviously, 32,000 new users gives them the opportunity to generate income from those people in the future, get them on their email database, um, but also gets them a lot of good publicity, a lot of good PR, a lot of good social traction by giving out these things. And then I'm sure the one you've all seen um, during this time is Zoom, but other communication companies are doing the same. They're giving away their tools free for key workers or people in high impact categories, so things like hospitals um, and education during this time. And Zoom themselves, they've grown to 200 uh, million daily meetings. That's how many Zoom meetings are happening right now during this crisis. Uh, just in December, so just before this period, they were doing 10 million meetings a day. So they've grown 20-fold during this. And a lot of that's attributed down to the good publicity, the good PR. Uh, they're getting out of people knowing about Zoom by giving away their products for free to people who need it. And they've got all of these extra users who would never have heard of Zoom before. 
like my mum's on Zoom now, my sister's on Zoom now. These are people who have never come across Zoom organically um, without this uh, situation happening and without Zoom pushing it through their marketing. So that's the first question I would ask is what's in your power to help people and grow? And I think what B&B Press here on their scale is a good example of that. They're genuinely helping you guys by offering this content, by offering this outlet. And in the long term, the trust that they'll have gained through this period may make them revenue in the future. So I think that's a really smart way to look at things. How can we help people and grow at the same time? It's worth noting that a lot of people think that during recession time or during crisis time, that search volume goes down. Um, obviously, looking at the data we showed at the beginning, we know more people are online and more people have uh, this extra time on their hands. Actually, search volume during recession time goes up. And we can see this across the board. So we can see it for expensive software like Salesforce, um, items that are pretty stable otherwise, like fitness, um, things that were evolving during the last recession, like Facebook or YouTube, um, or just standard business search terms like software as a service or social media marketing. These graphs all show what happened during the last recession. All of these searches increased um, in search volume during that time, and we're seeing the same um, during this crisis. And many of these lines don't go back down. Uh, things like this fuel, habit ch uh, fuel changes in habits, which stick with us for the long term. And because of that, this is the time to fill your funnel. So more people are online, they're doing more research, they have more time. This is the time to get them into your funnel ready for when they do buy again. So everything I've circled in green here, this is the things you should be focusing on in my opinion right now, is things like SEO, blogging, social media, content marketing, landing pages, calls to action forms. Those things are gonna drive strangers to your brand perhaps for the first time turn them into visitors and get them into your database as leads. Like I say, the idea isn't to try and close them today because in a lot of categories that isn't realistic, but you'll have your funnel filled for when you need it, when we come out the other side of it. So I'm saying to all of our customers, I'm saying to ourselves, this should be the time that we look at coming out of the other side of this with a bigger list or a bigger database than we had when we went into it. And there's three ways I think are good ways to fill your funnel right now. Number one is webinars. Um, obviously, webinars work. You're all sat here today listening to me on a webinar, so it's kind of proof that they do work. People are craving human interaction, and they need to fill the event void that's being caused. This is normally getting into the peak of event season, and people are missing that face-to-face -face interaction. Webinars aren't as hard or as expensive as people perceive them. You just need two things. You need to have a think about what content can you provide. So you can either think about content like this today, which is situational. How can I help my audience during this time? Or you can think about what would we be talking about regardless of COVID? Like what would be the things that happen in our industry? What would be the content we're putting out there? And come up with ideas and ways you can help people through webinars. The other thing is you'll need a webinar software. Um, so I know b, b Press are using Zoom and HubSpot to do this, but if you didn't have those tools, you can sign up to things like uh, Zoom webinars and others which are kind of ready-made webinar kits. And they start like 30 pound a month and it'll give most people what they need. So this doesn't have to be expensive or difficult, but webinars definitely can fuel pipeline. Um, it's worth noting like Digital 22 are running a series of webinars, which I'll touch on later, but we came up with the idea to do that in one morning. In the afternoon, we had the landing page live. The next day we had the speaker signed up and then three days later we were running them. It, it's, it can be a very quick turnaround and it can drive pipeline like both ours and BB Press's webinars. They've got over 100 people in the first couple of days of launching them. So people are signing up um, and people are um, interested. So it <coughs> works. Um, the next would be to look at long term channels. What are the long term plays I can focus on right now? So for long term channels from a digital marketing perspective, there are things like SEO and content marketing. The point of those things, regardless of the situation, is to drive results in three to six months' time. Um, and in three to six months' time, we may be at the better end of this. You'll want those results when we get there. And the great thing about the long-term channels is they don't have to be COVID-19 specific. So you can write about things that are completely unrelated to COVID-19. Uh, you can try and rank for keywords that are completely unrelated. 
um, because they will be served up for people when the demand is there, when people are searching for them, when people are looking for them. So unlike the other channels you may be running at the moment, which need to be reactive, like PPC, like social media, um, like email, they all have to have a very COVID-19 feel. Often don't, so they're good places to focus on right now. And the last one is the educational focus. So we've seen all the big players in our industry release stats around how their educational content is doing and they're all recording record numbers. So we talked a bit about digital marketing already. The companies like HubSpot and Moz, they're all recording record numbers of educational content as well. Um, educational content doesn't have to be just online courses and things like that to help um, build knowledge for your customer. It can be also helping them research what they need to buy, research better ways for them to improve. So have a think about how you can educate um, your personas through educational focused content. And this can be in whatever medium comes most comfortable to you. This can be blogs, it can be eBooks, it can be online courses, it can be webinars, it can be videos. But this educational focus right now is winning. And that's something I'd say you should be using to, to fuel that funnel. And then what happens next? So that's looking at what's happening right now. What are the things we should be thinking about and considering right now? What's going to happen next? What sort of periods of marketing are we going to go through at the other side of this? I really like this um, visual description, um, again, from Rand's piece, which lays out what we're all thinking right now in the Martin world, which is we'll go through th three waves or three periods of change. The first one is the one we're living right now, which is where everything is about COVID-19. Every channel you switch on, every um, email you open, whatever it is, it's all about COVID-19. That's all we're talking about as a society. And that's going to continue, obviously, through March and April and maybe a little further into the future than that as well. We're then going to have two further periods, which I'm going to jump into now. But one, the, first, the second one is transition to life online. So through the next six to nine months, these things will have changed us um, and we'll be adapting to those new changes. And then next year, in whatever time frame this is, there'll be the new normal. There'll be the habits and technologies that we pick up that stay with us for life. And these will be the three waves that we go through. So looking specifically at the, the transition to life online and the sort of the new normal, my advice around the transition to life online is this is the time to undergo the digital transformation your business needs. And I think someone said that right at the start as this is what they're focusing on. Uh, crisis and recession speed up change. They speed up change and they speed up adoption rates of technologies, as we saw with some of those search trends. So this is the time to be asking your team, how do our potential customers want to be sold to? How can our marketing, sales and services teams be more efficient? How can our product and service change for today's and tomorrow's personas? Because this is the time to lay those foundations ready for what like, uh, the new normal is going to be. <coughs> impact and change you get ready for that now and undergo that digital transformation the second part of this is when we come out of this when we're in the transition to life online um, things are going to be loud like when the lockdowns are lifted and we all start going back out into society and start going back into our offices and people can work in factories again and whatever it is marketing's going to be super loud i've spoken to dozens and dozens of marketing people during this time and every one of them down to a person has said we're going to go big in quarter three and quarter four. Um, businesses still have targets. Marketers still have ambition. There's going to be a wealth of promos, offers, and huge campaigns during that period of time. So it's going to be super loud. So what I'm saying to people there is going back to what you were doing normally, if you've paused and you switch back on, it's not particularly going to cut it in Q3 and Q4 because there's going to be so much noise. You need to do something exceptional or above average to get through that noise and cut through your competition. So bear in mind, it's going to be really noisy during those quarters. And the other part is those long-term plays that I said before that you'll be thankful for. Um, if you keep playing the long-term plays during this period, you're going to be ahead in Q3 and Q4. You're going to be already positioned for what people are going to search for. You've changed your content. You've changed your, um, your messaging on your website, whatever it is, you're already ready. So make sure that you use this time so that when... Um, when we're going through this loud period, you're prepared and you're already ahead of your competition. And then the third part of it is the new normal. Like the habits that we've all picked up from this aren't going to die. Sure, I'm like, I can't wait to get back to the office. It's super hard to work from home. I miss the interaction with the team and all that sort of stuff. I can't wait for life back to normal, but we'll have all fundamentally changed as part of this. 
I'm not going to be doing 50 Zoom calls a week, but I'll probably be doing significantly more than the four or five I used to do. Those habits are going to stick with us. So internet usage will stay high. It might not be 100% higher than it was, but it could stay at 50% higher for sure. People will come out of this loyal to new brands, new brands that were there for them during this time, new technologies that they tried during this time, and they'll stay customers of those for the long term. Um, so this is the time to have that message in your content, your ads, your webinars, whatever you do as marketing people, have it ready for what the new normal is for your customers because your customers will have fundamentally changed. So have a think about how you can position yourself now for those customers when they come back. And a, a few ended notes really, um, brands are defined during a crisis, like every brand, every company can have a company philosophy, a company ethos, core values, whatever it is you want to call them. But when the chips are down and we're going through a crisis, this is the time we find out who lives them and who doesn't. So there's companies on here that are coming through this with a very poor public perception. And as people are coming out of it, generating massive trust. And this is just, these are my opinions. These are what I'm reading. These are what I'm seeing in my news and my Twitter feed. You'll have your own uh, opinion on who's doing well and who's not. But brands truly are defined during this crisis. So have a think about where you want to be, which side of this page you want to be on as marketers, sales professionals, business owners. Can you come out with this generating trust rather than having a poor public perception? Because coming out of this and saying our ethos is X, Y, and Z, people are going to say, well, you didn't do that last year. Uh, you didn't live by those values. So if they are true values, this is the time to live by them. And I think a way to sum up everything I've said today, um, there's a really good quote uh, that says, channels, creators, and media sources that earn attention right now will continue to exert that influence long after the crisis has passed. Uh, brands that earn positive attention will capitalize on it. Those that falter or fail to execute um, will be unlucky. Many simply will be gone. And I think that's a good summary for us to look at this lens. Can we earn attention right now? Can we exert positive influence? Because it's going to set us up well for the long term if we simply stop or fail to ex execute or we're unfortunate by the circumstances that come. This will hurt us for the long term. And my final note, um, and someone said this probably better than I did at the start, this will pass. This will pass. And our job as um, marketing and sales professionals is to transfer confidence during this time. The whole point of marketing and sales is to make people trust us, make people want to work with our companies, make people want to work with our brands. People are paying attention to us, be it employees, be it uh, perspective, prospects, be it customers. So it's our jobs to transfer confidence during this period that it will pass. No one's predicting this will last forever. It will pass and we all need to uh, put that confidence out there so people can have trust in us in the future. Um, if you want to know more about like digital marketing specific stuff, I know being be Press have got loads of amazing webinars uh, lined up uh, that span the breadth of marketing and business. But if you want to jump in and get more specific digital marketing <laughs> stuff, um, we're running a series of webinars this week. Um, Dave and Ada said they send these slides around and the link to it is here. So we've got one at one o'clock today on email marketing, for example, one tomorrow on reporting, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to double down on this digital marketing stuff that I'm talking about, feel free to jump in these completely free of charge. Um, and you can hear what these guys have to say as well. But that's everything I had planned to talk through today. Um, I'll switch my screen to share off now so I can see you and I can see the comments, but I'm more than happy to um, answer any questions anyone had or anything anyone wants to discuss. Has anybody got any quick questions just before I kind of wrap the session up? <clears throat> just a bit of feedback. That was really good. Thanks, Ricky. Appreciate it. No, I appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad. It's weird talking and not hearing anyone for 40 minutes, so glad it went down well. I'm used to it. Just keeping them awake is a hard job. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying my best. <laughs> Great. Um, so th thanks, Ricky. Uh, I mean, to, to be fair, I've listened to you uh, talk quite a lot and you never fail to kind of amaze me with your content. It's kind of so relevant and uh, I think you do it in a style that everybody kind of understands. So really appreciate that. I think from our perspective, in terms of BNB Press, we went on this journey around kind of three or four years ago where we went out of that just being a commercial print company into wanting to become something a little bit different and we we invested 
our time and our money um, into Digital 22. And we also, our web have gone up from kind of, um, you know, about 100 and odd a month it was to over 10,000 a month now. So, Hey, if your signal's going a little Whatever bit. Whatever we're doing, we're to... doing it obviously in connection with, um, you know, our internal marketing team. Is it dropped out? Yeah, it's dropping out a little dropped bit. Dropped out? Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, it's dropping out a little bit. This is so frustrating. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah, okay. So the journey that we've been on um, has, has been really special and it's been really worthwhile. So, um, you know, anybody that wants any more information, then pick up with Ricky um, at Digital22. Um, in terms of, from our own perspective, we've got a great website, which is www.bbpress.co.uk. On there, you'll find lots of useful content. There's a load of eBooks that you can download. There's weekly blogs that go out, all relevant to do with, um, you know, marketing or print topics. So have a look at the website, take a look. In terms of um, the format moving forward, the Monday session, it, we've got two very different kind of sessions. So the Monday session is going to be with Luke all the time, and that's the Monday motivation. So that's all the inspirational stuff, the motivation stuff. And then the Wednesday session is going to be kind of learning a new topic or talks like Ricky. We've got some great speakers over the next eight weeks. Appreciate everybody's got a busy schedule. Dip in, dip out, come when you like. Um, we have got a session on Monday. I know it's Easter Easter Monday on Monday, but we are still going to do a session on Luke's motivation for anybody that wants it. Um, and that's it. Anna, have you got anything to say? Nothing? No, just thank you for joining us all today. I found it really yeah, great. Useful. Yeah. Great, great turnout. And we will get the slides out. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Really great right. to see you Monday. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.